Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to your Board of Education meeting for January of 2018. And wow, board members, what a crap. Yes. yes. We got a lot of recognitions to do tonight, and we're looking forward to it. Um, first item of business is the Pledge of Allegiance, and I'd like to call on Mr. Michael Bill Grove if he would lead us in that. Everybody stand. <coughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. Our mission statement tonight will be from Mr. Butch Allen. Berber County Schools will provide a quality education will provide quality educational programs and services to ensure students academic and vocational success. Thanks, sir. Okay. Do we have anybody for public comment? No, we do not. All right. All right. Moving on down the agenda. Um, you have your agenda in front of you. Will you look it over? And after that, uh, if anybody does not have any changes or deletions. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Got a motion, got a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All in favor of this motion, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. All right. Minutes. The approval of the minutes, and you have those in front of you as well for January 9th and also for the meeting last evening that was held over at the Ed Tech Center. Have a motion to accept? All right. Second. Okay. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor of this motion, say aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. All right. Now coming to item number four. I think this is what everybody's here for. <laughs> Public recognition. And I'm going to ask Mr. Terry Williams. He will be assisting Ms. Nicole Howard tonight. Thank you. Recognizing uh, care packet winners both for the month of December as well as January. We're going to start with our um, care packet nominees for December. And our winners were sponsored by Golden Ticket Theater. And the character trait that was recognized in our schools for the month of December was gratitude. At the elementary level, the nominees were from Bath Elementary, Taylin Markava. From Shakawinity Middle, Taiwan Thomas. From Shakawinity Primary, Jackson Jones. From Eastern Elementary, Rylan Williams. From John Cottontalo, Landon Moss, from John Small, Keegan Warren, and from S.W. Snowden, Ahmed Waheed, Kendry Otto Williams, and Mwak Waheed Waheed. And the winner at the elementary level was Mwak Waheed, who will come forward. Man. This was a film. Stand right here. Tristan. Wow. Muath is a fifth grader at uh, S.W. Snow. His parents are Rashad Salah Hassan, if they're present, if they will stand. <laughs> and he was presented by um, his teacher, Ms. Shanae Moore, and the counselor, Mr. Wayne Parsons. And they had about two pages of stuff. I pared it down a little bit. <coughs> It says, when I think about all that gratitude means to me, as stated above, one person in my class is the true definition of explaining at all times what gratitude means. This student is Muaf Wahib. Muaf is a student who is grateful just for being able to come to school and see his friends, his teachers, and knowing that he's going to learn something every day. <laughs> he is going to help somebody no matter what the task is, little or great. Muaf is one of our Arabic students who is one of the only ones in his family that speaks English. Muath tries to teach his mother how to speak English on a daily basis. Muath sees everything as a gift from God and he is always thankful. Recently, my students got their report cards and they had to write a reflection essay on how they felt when they saw their grades and what were they motivated by to do as a result. Muath stated that his report card was cool, but he was going to try to get all A's because he did not want to disappoint anyone. Moab tells me all the time that he is grateful for the people in his life and the voice that is in his head, the voice that always tells him that he can succeed when he feels he cannot. In Moab's essay, he stated, Once I got my report card, I imagined myself on a job working and thanking Miss Shanae for what she did for me. I will thank her every day I see her. It was so cool having those grades, and I was happy to have them. I said to myself, Man, you have done it. You need to thank the people. You need to thank the people who raised you and the people who taught you. You have amazing people in your life, so be grateful. 
I love all people and let's keep it that way. Mu'ad shows kindness to all that he meets and gratitude to all that have shaped and molded him into the person he is today. He has a humble an humble attitude at all times and all his classmates and teachers adore him. Mm-hmm. He lets go of all the ideas of self-importance and instead acknowledges at everything in his life that has made it better. Uh, this kid is the definition of gratitude. He is grateful for what is much and for what is least. Just by his actions and his attitude, he helps me to be grateful for everything, no matter what struggles I am experiencing. He teaches me each and every day. We say congratulations to Ma- Moa. Certificate we'd like to present to you, and also a couple of gifts. I'm going to give us something. And I would like for you, if you would, just to come around for the four day market. Shake it. Mm-hmm. Shake it. Shake it. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you for being who you are. And being such a fine dress. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So handsome. He is. He is. He is. He is. He is. He is. At the middle school level, the nominees were from Bath Elementary, Ronan Lewis and Kayla McKeel, from Chakawinity Middle, Nashaya Jones, from P.S. Jones, Mac Hudson, and from S.W. Snowden, Ken Adams. And the winner at the middle school level is Mac Hudson, if you would come forward. Mac is a sixth grader at P.S. Jones. His parents are Victor and Jennifer Hudson, if they will stand. And it was presented by Dawn Landon, his teacher. And she wrote, Mac Hudson, a sixth grader at P.S. Jones, shows, gra- shows gratitude in many ways. <laughs> and she wrote an acrostic poem to list just some of the ways. G gives words of encouragement on a daily basis and brings in items to add to the lesson. For example, his father's bifocal work glasses when we were studying about light. R raises his hand always and adds intelligent conversation to our lesson, which I am thankful for. A always says please and thank you. T thanks others for their help, especially when he was on crutches and had others carrying his things. I inquires about others' feelings and shows sympathy to others. T tells you he appreciates what you do. U unites classmates by always being aware of their feelings. D dedicates time to ask me if I need help, like passing out papers and offers without me having to ask. And E, eager to help without being rewarded and is thankful for the opportunity. And Mrs. Uh, Landis says, thank you, Matt, for always showing gratitude. gratitude. You are awesome. Congratulations. Congratulations. At the high school level, the nominees were from the Early College High School, my cousin Moore, from Northside High School, Reagan Dana, from Washington High School, Taja Nikita Mackey, and from Southside High School, Jeremiah Gorham, and the winner at the high school level was my cousin Moore, if you would come forward. My cousin is a 10th grader at the Early College High School. His mother is Miss Latoria Warren, and she will stand. And he was presented by the counselor, um, Mrs. Ginger, Ms. Ginger Jefferson. And she wrote, it's not every day a student comes up to you and wants to share their gratitude for the things you have done for them. It seems to be even a rare event when they actually put effort into writing a note to you. My cousin did just that. He personally delivered a note to Mrs. Peck to share with the faculty his gratitude for all we had done for him throughout the school year. Mm-hmm. My cousin also shows his gratitude by being a member of our service club and SGA. During his free time between high school and college classes, he helped field appreciation bags for the BCCC Campus Police and the Washington City Police and is currently working on an early college high school scrapbook filled with newspaper articles. We say congratulations. <laughs> And 
same routine. You would go around and greet the board, and then you have Girls better step it up. Now. <coughs> Tell me, all boys. Oh, great. That was just thinking about it. Great job. Yes. All right, girls, we better step it up. These are all boys. <laughs> I just said it was <laughs> all great winners. Yeah, <laughs> quite soon it feels. <laughs> Those young men make them old men look good. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's for sure. <laughs> we are mighty blessed in both camps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Now for the month of January. In January, our nominees were sponsored by the restaurant on, on the waterfront. And the character trait that was recognized in our schools during the month of January was self-discipline. At the elementary level, the nominees were from Bath Elementary, Nate Corden, from Chakawinity Middle, Cadence Hodgson, <coughs> from Chakawinity Primary, Landon Bell, from Eastern Elementary, Janaya McKenzie, from John Cotton Taylor, Tristan Lewis, from John Small, Zamir Spencer, from Northeast Elementary, Malachi Moore, and from S.W. Snowden, Kaya Little, and Cambria Clark. And the winner, it's from John Small, Zymir Spencer, he will come forward. <laughs> Zymir is a fifth grader at John Small. His mother is Miss LaQuisha Spencer, if she's here. Okay. And he was presented by Miss Marilyn Crisp, his teacher. And she wrote, Zymir Spencer is our class character ed nominee for the trait of self-control or self-discipline. Zamir is naturally a very down-to-earth, laid-back student. He is always calm and focused on his work and has the amazing ability to put others around him at ease. Zamir is human, however, and, he had, and has had the occasion to possibly lose his cool when faced with a challenge. When situations like this arise, Zamir always walks away. He removes himself from the situation rather than letting things escalate. We are so proud of Zamir for being such a peaceful and gentle student. He is a true gentleman. Congratulations. Congratulations, and uh, there's some people who said I need to text a message to you. Have a certificate and some gift certificates as well. So I hope you enjoy those, and if you would, greet the board. And I don't we'll know. have some pictures in just a second. You got the last. Good job. Congratulations. <clears throat> At the middle school level, from Bath Elementary, the nominees were Gracie Landek, from Chakawinity Middle, Kamaya Edmondson, from Northeast Elementary, DeAndre Artis, from P.S. Jones, William Hudnell, and from S.W. Snowden, Lewis Adams, and the winner is from Chakawinity Middle, Kamaya Edmondson, if she will come forward. And Kamaya is a seventh grader at Chakawinan Middle School. Um, her mother is Ms. Lashada, or Lashada Davis, if she will stand. I see it right. Okay, nice. Yeah. Thank you. And she was presented by her teacher, Ms. Mandy Stone. And Ms. Stone wrote, I would like to nominate Kamaya Edmondson for the character trait of self-discipline. Self-discipline is being able to put first things first and balance various aspects of your life in order to find success despite fast, past failures. Kamaya is a student that knows how to balance multiple aspects of student life. Academically, she is in the pre-algebra class, which is an accelerated math class and can be demanding. She also performs well on the ELA assessments and is able to maintain good grades in the rest of her classes. She is disciplined enough to stick with the assignments until the end and to give me her absolute best. She also learns from her mistakes and works hard to fix errors. Athletically, Kamaya is a cheerleader for CMS and our squad is known for excellence in competitions and ball games. She keeps up with this expectation and may have late practices or game nights that result in getting home late. Kamaya will always have her homework, even on a game night. I've never known her to complain about assignments in or out of class. Socially, Kamaya is someone who has a smile that will light up a room. She is definitely a social butterfly. 
I always see her getting along with her peers. She has a healthy social life, and this is difficult to balance with academics and athletics as a middle school student. Thank you for being so self-disciplined, Kermaya. This character trait will take you far in life. Keep balancing all those parts of your life, and you will be successful. Congratulations. Yeah. See that smile. Congratulations. <laughs> Keep cheering. Yeah. At the high school level, the nominees were from the Early College High School, Savannah O'Brien, from Northside High School, Jordan Stevens, and from Southside High School, Zachary Beecham. And the winner at the high school level was Zachary Beecham or Zach, if he will come forward. <laughs> Zach is a 12th grader at Southside High School. His mother is Ms. Karen Beecham, if she will stand. And he was, was, was presented by Ms. Vicki Hamill, his teacher. So Zachary is participating in our internship program. He is always prepared for upcoming dates, early with submittal of assignments, and thoughtful in his, in his com completion of tasks. While working with employers, we often hear of students lacking the soft skills to be successful. Zach's employer praises him for his creative mind and says he does well in time demanding situations that, and that he is a hard worker, always on time and eager to learn. Managing school and an internship and doing them both well requires self-discipline. Zach exemplifies this trait and deserves to be recognized for it. This character trait will serve him well throughout life. We say congratulations, Zach. Congratulations, Congratulations. Keep up the good <laughs> I did get a girl this time. <laughs> I keep my <laughs> tail. The National Board Certification Program is a way to recognize the accomplished teaching that is occurring in North Carolina's classrooms. The certification process is based on high and rigorous standards that evaluate teaching practice through the performance-based assessments. Generally, this process can take up to a year or longer to complete. National Board Certified Teacher's mission is to advance the quality of teaching and learning in our schools. Tonight, I would like to recognize four of our teachers who are receiving their National Board Certification, and we have three others who are, who are being recertified. They've had National Board Certification for 10 years. So I'd like to ask for these folks to come up. We'd like to have each one greet the board and, and get a picture with the whole group. Yolanda Collins, Catherine Alleygood, Neil Kleindis, Emily Myers, and then our renewing teachers are Shannon Braxton, Sue Ann Blank, and Jennifer Waller. Congratulations. 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 Congratul
Congratulations. Congrats and thanks for your input. Look at that. We also want to recognize our teachers who received uh, an award through the Bright Ideas grant. And the Bright Ideas is a, is a great program for educators. It's provided by local electric uh, co-ops co and locally it's uh, provided by Tideland EMC. And we want to thank Tideland for their participation. We have three winners and I'd like for them to come up. I'm going to call their names and then read a very brief description of the, of the project that they have. Uh, Alice Fawcett from Bath Elementary, Tammy Wagaman from Northside High School, and Melissa Nelson and Debbie Arthur from Northeast Elementary. If they'd come up, I just want to read through these for a second, if you would. Alice Fawcett from Bath Elementary, the title is Sorry About the Mess in the Library, We're Learning Here. We received a little bit more than $800, I think is correct. And the description is students in grades K through 8 will collaborate to invent, engineer, build, and create using Lego circuits and coding. The school's library will serve as a makerspace hub. Through makerspace activities, all students will improve their dexterity, problem solving, and critical thinking skills, and their ability to follow directions. Next, Tammy Wagaman from Northside High School. The title was How Do We See Our Sales? This grant replaces now obsolete school microscopes and water baths to enhance biology lessons related to the study of plant and animal sales. And Melissa Nelson and Debbie Arthur, again, a little bit more than $800, correct? Mm -hmm. Uh, from Northeast Elementary, their title was Apples Are No Longer Just for Teachers. Second grade students will be introduced to the use of iPad minis in the classroom for both independent and collaborative study in math and language arts. Again, we want to say congratulations, well done, and we'd like for you to greet the board. <laughs> As Mr. Wills would say, uh, we're going to let you have a minute to excuse yourself. Uh, if you need to go, we understand. And, but if you'd like to stay, we welcome you to stay. But now is your time to make a break if you'd like to. <laughs> They're making a break. That will never happen. Nice job. Congratulations. 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 Be hanging in there. Yeah, he it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Now she's trying to take my man away from me. Oh, Lord. No, she's not. You got no word about it. You got no word about it. I'm just trying to see it. Uh-huh. Look at her. Watch her. She ain't. 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 She uh, the final four here in the audience. Uh, uh, hold on, Stan, somebody left something down on the floor. Yeah, now we got five. Good. Okay. Check it for money, we'll keep it. Right. <laughs> we'll move on down to a action items to discuss and 5.1 uh, request for a walking track at Bath Elementary. Miss Mindy Davis. Okay. 
Yeah. Two years ago, I started a running club at Bath Elementary, and the kids have to stay on campus, and we have nowhere for them to run. So right now, we're running in the bus parking lot. Um, and I would propose um, we want to build a walking running track at the school. We're not looking for we're looking we're not looking for any money. We're doing it strictly through grants and donations. Um, we're looking at about we want to do concrete because we feel like over the time it would hold up better and um, I had someone come quote fifty thousand um, dollars there is a part that holds water when it rains so we might want to build a bridge but that doesn't um, include the cost of that and there's also some expansion joists um, but um, I feel like our our kids could benefit from it the walk and running track um, also um, There's um, the fourth grade, they got an initiative um, for the walking classroom. We feel like they could walk on the, you know, they walk around campus, but they could walk their classrooms. Teachers could take their kids out there and walk. Um, and it goes right along with the, health, the Healthy Schools initiative. And um, then on rec nights, when people are out there um, on the rec fields, because that's where we want the proposed track to be, um, parents could walk on the track, um, the community could use it after hours um, so we basically just want approval to go ahead and try to raise money and get donations to build this track and then also um, I became aware that you guys um, have a policy where we can't name tracks after people and I would like to ask that you amend that because we would like to name this track after Lee Swain we want to name it the Lee Swain Memorial Track um, she was a community member in Bath Elementary and the um, wife of our former principal Brian Swain and she used to be a teacher um, she grew up in Bath and went to Bath High School um, she passed away last April after a long battle with cancer and she also worked at the Bath Historic Society and we just we would we were wondering if you could consider amending that just so we can name the track after her so those are our two proposals okay questions okay you've heard the request from Miss uh, Miss Davis any further discussion has this been run by the yes. Department? yes um and i even took it to um bubs who's the town manager and i showed him the map and he said i don't think i i don't see any problem i'll run it by a couple people and i haven't heard anything from him since so i'm assuming that it was okay i, I see stan shaking yes so that means i was going he knows i was going to ask him as he checked it out Is everything yes okay, stan? we've been working together yes okay. yeah. I, I, have no, I have no problem with one. I don't mind having that one-time amendment for naming it after the young lady. You, 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 do you really feel that the concrete would last five years down the road versus a good maintained gravel walkway? You know, like the, the, the crush stone, not, right. not the gravel. We talked about that, and the thing is maintenance. You know, you have weeds and stuff like that. I did, someone did tell me, um, they're putting in a new right after the bridge in Bath they're putting in a new park and someone mentioned to me the other day there's a new material that's kind of like concrete but different but I haven't I mean she just told me about it the other day um, and the reason we didn't do asphalt or anything like that was because of the maintenance and it would cost to maintain like spray weeds and things like that right. and so we we just decided maybe concrete would be better for the long haul I mean it's not the best surface to run on well right i mean you know? I, I wasn't even looking yeah. at it as running mm -hmm. but i mean you know with with the fluctuations of cold right you know you have joints you'll have some seams or something yeah you will get weeds in those seams yeah you can think you won't but you will um and <coughs> if anything heavy ever drives over one of the and you know you can prevent that right. but things happen then I, I was just throwing it out. Right. Right. And we, I mean, and we talked about different types of materials, and we just all kind of came to the agreement that concrete was probably the best thing. And I don't know if Stan wants to weigh in on any of that. Or. That was the only proposal. We just think it's a point to 4,000 pound eggs is what they suggested. You putting any fiber in it? They didn't elaborate, so I was just reading that. Okay. It's 
suppose we could always go back and add that was if they have a budget number that they worked up by the local contractor right. that provided it. We could yeah. change it up and send the stuff. Yeah, so we just had him go out there and see how much it would cost right. if we did concrete. Right. Right. Well, the, f the f putting the fiber in it will hold up in cold, you know, the fluctuations yeah. in temperature. I, I, I would I just want to make sure the rec department's on board with it because you you're going into the parking lot and you know, there's a lot of parking a lot of driving goes on in that area and I, I would be concerned about the concrete being driven over top of as much as it's going to be because it's, this is the uh, concession stand where it's starting right um, that's concession no, stand there well, oh, that, uh, See, this is the outline of the track. I might have drawn that wrong. It's not. It's all the way at the back. Of the it's all the way at the back where there's a tree line, so people wouldn't actually be driving on We're it. We're talking about right up here. Well, no, this is concession stand. This is the yeah, the concession stand's over here, down at the bottom. Yeah. Down here. Yeah, that's the top of the concession stand in the bottom right corner of y'all's Towards the, the back, where the um, yeah, that's the concession fence is, in the tree line. That's the tree line. That's the problem. I'm looking at. I'm looking at wrong. Okay, this is the driveway coming in from the post office. No, no. The highway coming in this way is from post office. There is a road right there by the concession stand, but it's farther back. Okay, okay, okay. It goes around to the school building. Hey, have you um have you started raising any money or do you have any any kind of family dollar? What, what you're saying? Possible you know, promises of that's right, that's a building down below. Okay, if that might have been my error because I was money, looking right? at the map. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, I could, I to, I'll confer to, to Bush, but we're both familiar with the bath area. Okay. That's, 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 that's that's that, was, that was my fault because I drew the lines. So. Right. We're, we're just trying to keep it straight. straight. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, 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 folks, Miss Walker has got the floor at this time. I'm sorry. I, do you have any promises of money or do you have an area that you plan I mean that's a lot of money yeah. to raise so I don't know how, how are we looking at you hope to have this money raised in a year two years ten years well I was told before I could even start that I had to come here first right right so um, I did work with um, Michelle Oros and she and um, I have another lady that I'm working with and we're trying to find grants and things like that um, we have someone in our big community that um, would probably give a big donation. Towards That's why I was track. wondering. Do you have some? Uh, yeah, you we, have some way to a jumping off point where you're just not going to start tomorrow raising right. money. If we, I mean, and that's a lot of money. Yeah, it is. It is. And um, I mean, I know it's probably going to take a few years. Um, we even thought about having little pavers at the beginning of the track where people from Bath. You know, because it's named after Lee Swain as well. If if that happens, you know, we know people people who live in that community love their community, and they might buy a paper, put someone's name on it, like they did at the library. Right. So, I, you know, I do understand. It's probably going to take two or three years to raise all that money. This is also the type of project that Kate B. Reynolds. Loves. Right. That's that's, that's right. what I was so wondering if there was a hope that you were going to go after some large grants because I thought yeah it would take a very long time if you had to raise it. A little well, bit and see time. the the Beaufort Trail at the college was what sparked me to kind of do this, right. but I, I haven't really pursued it further because I wanted to get <coughs> approval first. And I, I I don't have a problem with it being named after Lee, but what is the board policy specifically, Doctor? Yeah, we don't do not name uh, buildings or parts of property after people. So okay, have to and, set aside and, and to amend that, does that have to be an amendment for just this only? Because yeah. I do I do worry that. Because we've turned some people down, That's right. Right. and That's right. and when you turn people down and then you amend it for one reason, what will give us a reason to turn right. the next mm -hmm. person down? And that's my only concern. And if we could, I know we're it's a double-edged sword. If you remove that from this action item, so we approve the fundraising, then it may make fundraising harder for you because if you go at it, this is a memorial for Lee Swain. It may help you raising money. But at the same time, I think we're opening ourselves up for something that we may have a different board in place when the money's actually in That's place right. That's true. Well, that may decide not to uphold what we say but what the policy is. One thing you sense? might do, consider doing is to put a plaque there to say that the track was built in honor of. Yeah. I mean, really, a track That's what we really did before, I think. Yes. But the name on a building is different than... That's what I... Done there's a, a way around, around it, it. Yeah. so that you can still do right. it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Tennis uh, right. courts and things like that. Right. Okay. Do you think that would be amenable to them in that way? It's not, 
you're still getting her name there right. and you're giving her a memorial but it's not technically named after her right because right. that would be the only way you could do it anyway because it's right. a track that's right sure right. Right. so it's not like it's a building you put her name in living memory of right. something of that nature right. you see those at the start of the right. right. mm -hmm. is there any more is there any more discussion or questions no. No. i'll entertain a motion so move mr chair second okay is this to do the recognition is it all together all together do to, to for the plaque and everything okay so to do a plaque and then you're okay okay right. thank you okay. very much all right got a motion do i have a second second yeah. all right got a second all right any more discussion seeing none all in favor of this motion say aye aye, aye. aye. all opposed motion passes very nice. and thank you discussion that should have happened but you're going to continue to work with them right stan mm -hmm. okay thank you all right thank you mr Maley. Good evening. Good evening. Um, Ms. Duke was nice enough to get some information in your, on your board docs at a very late uh, time this afternoon. We have been working on a wide area network RFP for the last few months, and we've been trying to work the legalities out with the contract between ourselves and the service provider. And we are at a point now where we feel like we are pretty confident that um, the contract will be to our liking. So at the request of the board attorney, not Ms. Edwards, but Mr. Rod Malone, who is working at her, at her direction on this particular item, has um, asked us me to present the contract for approval, knowing that this is not the absolute final contract that might come tomorrow or the day after, but approving it and allowing the um, board attorney and the superintendent to make some small final modifications to that contract. The reason why I'm doing that is because we are already getting into the year and I really had wanted to have this wrapped up before the end of last year because this is going to be a large complex scale rollout for the entire district. So even right now at this time two weeks waiting, not to put any pressure though, would might throw a little kink in the in the whole plan. So I apologize for that. It's just been a uh, a lot of legal issues that have been trying to work through because in this particular case we have been the ones who have been writing the contract and then we have to uh, coordinate that with the vendor to make sure that they agree with it and so on and so forth so in your uh, board docs you should have a document entitled Beaufort Sunlink contract for wide area network this is the actual contract that we are finalizing with the vendor, who in this case is Suddenlink, or no, known uh, doing business as Seabridge Communications. And what basically the contract is, I'm asking for a 10-year contract to provide wide area network services to Beaufort County Schools to our sites. Um, if you would look at the Exhibit A, which is titled uh, RFP Exhibit A. This is the actual RFP that was returned from Suddenlink. And if you go all the way to the end, you will see the pricing in the contract for Suddenlink providing at a monthly rate of $753.84 per site. I have a summary sheet of all this, so if you just bear with me, I will get to that in a few moments. So this is the actual contract, Exhibit A. And then the next one is the SLA. If you notice, this also says not final. Is it, is it not there? It's there. Okay. Is the sudden link Exhibit B? The only thing we're trying to work through at the very end is on the chronic interruptions to make sure that we have an opportunity if there's an extended outage that we can change or cancel our contract and the final verbiage is being worked up at this time. And then we have Appendix C or Attachment C. What Attachment C allows us for is scalability because as we all know 10 years is a long time so 
we have agreed that the contract can be raised by that each site can have an incremental increase of one gigabits per second over the term of the contract up to 10 gigabits per second at $76.50 per gigabit, which is quite an incredible rate. And then the last document I have is a signed evaluation grid. And this is where me and my team went through and went through the weighting factors on the two vendors who provided responses to the RFP. Um, they are Kintera and Sunlink. Kintera is our current provider and done a really good job for us. But currently our network only has about five schools on fiber. The rest of our schools are on microwave. The issue with microwave is that it's not very scalable above speeds of 600 meg or 1.2 gig. Another potential issue, of course, this can happen with any vendor, is one of my concerns is that one day we're going to have a lightning strike, which we've had on the, before on the tower, and the weather's going to be bad, and they can't get it repaired in time, and then we have an outage for <coughs> a day or so. Um, as I said, fiber is scalable. The one that the Sunlink plan, all they have to do is just actually make just a little software change into the switch. You go from one to two to three, so it's incremental. So it allows that flexibility. Right now, we have Southside High School at 175 megabits and Washington High School at 235 megabits. Both these schools, Washington High School since it's large and Southside since it has such a high degree of Chromebook deployment, are pushing right now that bandwidth limit. So I have got to get those schools at a minimum upgraded. Both those schools right now are on microwave. They are not on fiber. If you look on the back, or down, it's on, it's on the back of mine. There is an actual um, summary of the cost proposals that were submitted to us. So I asked for three term lengths. I asked for 36 months, I asked for 72 months, and I asked for 120 months. The reason I asked for 120 months is I have to be able to allow a vendor to turn their capital expenses into operational expenses because our district does not have a lot of fiber laid in it and, uh, by one or one company in particular. So I had to, had to make sure that there were some terms that they feel that they could recoup their investment in the district. If you look at the 36-month um, term, the one gigabit per second, from Sunlink is $15,500 per month with a non-recurring -re -re um, fee of 250 for a total of $808,000. If you look at the 72 month, one gigabit Sunlink, the cost is $1,116,000 over six years. If you look at the one gigabit Sunlink 10 year, the cost is $1,176,000. Now, what's, what's noticeable to me is that there's only a $60,000 difference right. in four terms. So for us, in order to, for us to be able to, let's say that we decided to go with a three-year contract, so to, to limit our exposure for the duration of the contract. That means at the end of the three years, the price difference between the three and the 10 we would have to get a gigabit circuit for $337 a month, which is not going to happen. The, and then if you look at the six-year versus the 10-year term, which is only 60,000 difference over four years, you would have to get a circuit for $96 a month after the initial six years. So it is my recommendation, even though I realize 10 years is a long time, and I know people talk about technological ob obsolescence. Fiber itself is not obsolete. It's the electronics at the end that might become obsolete. But 10 gig, we started with 100 meg in 2005. And right now, we still have schools, barely, but they're working at 175. This will give all our schools one gig with scalable up to 10 gigs over 10 years. That's why I'm recommending the uh, 10-year contract because of the, the ability of fiber to scale. 
And this, this $749 price is very good compared to the area. Um, some school districts were paying $1,200, $1,300 for 200 meg. So we've um, been working on this for quite a while. Um, anyway, I know that was a lot of information in a short amount of time. I think Dr. Phillips has a question. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. One I want to make, and then I do have a question. In, in terms of talking about the relative size and the speed, when, when we're talking about 100 meg, a thou it takes 1,000 meg to get to a gig. Take, it takes, um, yes, yes, 1,000 yeah, so meg, meg, megabits to get to a to, gig. To give you an idea of yes. where one gig is compared to where we are. Where, where does E-rate fall in? And, and E-rate I know we never want to budget on because it's not a guaranteed deal, but when you look at a dollar figure like that, it's shocking just to see a million on the page. How much of that potentially is there a, a opportunity to have the rebate with E-rate on? So, unfortunately, we're a <coughs> district, which means this is a, this is a, um, a, a lease that a guy was up anywhere from 80, excuse me, 80 to 4, uh, 90 percent we can get reimbursed on with E-rate. I've always been of the mindset though that you you don't know if you're going to get E-rate, so you want to be able to pay your bills. Um, but we can get 90 to 80 percent of our E-rate reimbursement. And then currently the state is reimbursing us for the non-discounted portion. So the state then puts in my PRC 73, whatever money we don't get from E-rate. But like I said, I've always felt like we needed, because we have to have this service. It's, it's almost like water electricity now. There's, I don't see any way that there's not going to be this requirement tomorrow and 10 years from now. So to me, it's, it's, it's like a utility at this point. So my goal was to get it down as much as possible, cost low, and scalability. That was my goal. But yes, sir, Dr. Phipps, E-rate, um, we have been getting E-rate all these years. We've gotten um, millions and millions of dollars. But to put it in perspective, we're paying $1,111 per month right now for circuits that are not as fast and are not scalable. So, and you had another question, sir? No, no. I have a question. Yes, um, ma'am. And if I get this uh, correct, then going this route it will be faster especially for those high schools that are pulling on it or no so okay because i hear that a lot especially at test time when you have so many mm -hmm. state tests that are now done on the computer i hear teachers and students complain about it being slower than normal and i'm i not being a techno uh, geek is that because so many people are on it simultaneously or there there are a lot of links in that chain okay. <clears throat> So sometimes it could be the testing site. There have been sometimes we've had issues with our wireless network. Normally, believe it or not, during testing, the demands on the wide area network are the least because there's no streaming videos. There's none of the high volume content that the teachers are using. So actually, usually on the WAN side during the um, testing period, it's not. <coughs> that can be sometimes the devices we have sometimes are old. Yeah. It, it, it depends. <laughs> you. There's a lot of it. And sometimes it can be the state. In fact, last week they were having issues because Google was having issues, so the app, app itself was not working. So it's... Because I hear a lot, especially at the high school level, where the... And, and I think I think what you said about the, the device, mm -hmm. some of those devices are, 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 are very old, but they're so slow. Right. And these kids are trying to get through a 90-minute test in 90 minutes, and when 20 of those minutes, their computer is barely percolating, it's very frustrating. Yes, ma'am. So, but like I said, at Washington High School, Southside, they are... When you initially log into your test, that's when you get a spike <coughs> because that's when the initial activity is. And then depending on how fast some people are, it usually lowers down. Um, so this certainly would not make that worse. Um, we, we are always trying, of course, to make sure that we get through testing. It's, um, it's always a challenge for us to make uh, But I, it, it would not hurt. Okay. And it would also provide us... Um, the ability to make sure that that was not going to be a bottleneck, I guess. That's at least one thing that we could get, know that that's not going to be a bottleneck for Good. us in the future. My other question is a business question. I know Suddenlink is technically not Suddenlink anymore. They've been bought out by another company. Uh, is it um, Altice? I, something like that. But they're still going by Suddenlink for now. I didn't read down into the fine print, but 
uh, it could change hands 10 times in 10 years. That's just how these media companies are. Are we protected on this price no matter who the new owner may be? I will double check with that, but I know there is language within there that does protect us about that. And okay. That we have I to just want to make sure because right. I, I'm understanding that some of the some of the deals that you have with Suddenlink as a residential subscriber, mm -hmm. that after a certain length of time, the new company will not will no longer honor those deals. They'll offer you other ones, but that those deals will go by the wayside. Right. This, these, those types of residential deals. This is an entirely different. Right. But I just want to make sure we're protected on this price. Okay. I will. Um, I will certainly get that double check for you. And uh, if that is the case. Is that, is that fine with you then? Or? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I just I just wanted because I, I didn't read way down into it, and yes, the language is there. I'm, I'm, I trust. And, and Carolyn, I think in this case it behooves the company to, to stay with us because they've got to invest so much capital. In exactly. Down the I would think so. so. Yeah. It would be to their advantage to continue on with us through the term of the contract. Um, is there, is but I think we need to make sure that we we got that in writing. Yes, sir. Is there guarantees on <coughs> what kind of guarantees do we have on the speed? From the from the vendor. So the SLA is listing it. It's ninety nine point nine nine percent. And how are they testing that? Well, they're going to be monitoring it with their own equipment, okay. and um, of course we have e equipment that we monitor too. But in the RFP, it stated that they would have latency of um, I think it's less than 25, 25 milliseconds and jitter of less than twenty five milliseconds and so on and so forth like this because. We need to make sure that it performs for like things like voice over IP and stuff right. like that. So that that is is in the um, in this part of the, the contract that was returned. Um, because I mean, to your point, I mean, we may have a hundred Chrome books today. Tomorrow we may have a thousand. Yes, sure. Every student may have a Chrome book <laughs> coming in in 2018. We don't know yet. Yes, sir. That would be an ultimate goal, right? Yes, sir. So I mean, this system. Yes, sir. We want we want to spec this system out to to go beyond that limit. Right. And so what we did, like I said in here, um, latency not to exceed 25 milliseconds. Uh, to put it in perspective, 500 milliseconds is half a second. Um, but fiber, if it's constructed properly, routed right. properly, should only be one or two okay. or three. And then. Um, <coughs> Jitter not to exceed 20 milliseconds, and that was placed in there, and that was to comply. And like I said, 99.99% uptime, which is probably not going to be probably achieved, but as long as we close, yes, sir, yes, right. sir. Um, we also put in there about th they couldn't throttle the circuit; they had to have it dedicated, it had to be scalable at 10 gig, yeah. layer two traffic, quality of service, all those types of things that. Um, we went through. Um, we had Suddenlink connecting P.S. Jones and John Small in 2011 for a few years in the time when the schools were built and we had to um, make a change because we moved the school. And Suddenlink actually got that contract and they provide a very good service for us. Um, we also had an optical internet service with Suddenlink a few years ago when the state wasn't providing us and, and that provided good service. Well, I, of course, I, I can't guarantee anything, but I would not be putting us at risk if I thought this was. Well, no, I, and I mean to, to Miss Carolyn's point, right? Yes, sir. I mean, these companies, these internet providers, you know, to residentials, to businesses. I mean, they love they love getting business contracts. Yes, sir. Um, they make promises to residents, mm -hmm. right? And I mean, I'm sorry. It, 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 I've proven that my internet provider is not providing me what I'm paying for. Right. But yet, you know, I've got fiber to premise. Right. Right. So it's not my stuff inside my house. It's probably a hub or a lack of a uh, a booster or something that they have not put on their back end right. when they installed the fiber. Mm -hmm. That's neither here nor there. Now it's a business contract. All your rates go up. I'm not, you know, you're not a resident anymore. And I'm just looking at expandability. Mm -hmm. I mean, today we've been fighting textbook issues for years. Well, e-readers and Chromebooks are becoming very, very reasonable. Yes, sir. Right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, I don't want us to go down this road or propose this road to where we couldn't put, you know, we don't have our own backbone to put something electronic in every child's hand that walks through the door. Well. 
and operate. Right. So, like I said, this is a fiber backbone. Right. It should provide all of the speed that we need for the future. It is scalable. And this is not our actual internet connection. Our internet connection is provided by the state. And um, that's uh, through MCNC. And um, right now, I think we have a one gig internet connection. So you can think about the aggregate of that. If you put a one gig here at every site, you'd have to have 14 gig to be saturating that particular link. Right. Which, so um, do you as do you as our expert in IT yep. feel comfortable with this? Yes, sir. I make a motion that we approve. Yep. What's your What's your request? Second. Yes, sir. That's what you want, right? Yes, sir. I second. I second. I'm waiting for that. Okay. <laughs> but thank you for uh, answering our no, question. Oh no, I'm absolutely. Sorry. And and if you if anybody would like to come and talk to me about any of this, I'd be more than glad to. We. I mean, it wasn't just me. We we had a discussion with the team, and and we, yeah. you know, I, if it was anything but fiber. I probably would say no, but it's fiber. Yeah. Okay. It's Thank you, Bob. No, sir. And that's, and that's what we need to get to. We right. need to get the fiber. Mark, we got you a motion and got a second. <coughs> okay. Anybody else got anything? No. Seeing none, all in favor of his request? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Thanks, Thanks for all the time. Thank you. Thank you. And for your due diligence. We appreciate it. <laughs> all right. It's Mr. Mark Doon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to take you back to the, the beginning of the Fair Labor Standards Act, and no, I'm just kidding. No, um, <laughs> we got another job, right? We, we have a, uh, we just have a, a loophole that, that I would uh, request the board to assist us okay. with. There are very rare occasions when classified employees, especially in the maintenance department, custodial or transportation, have to be called in to work on a holiday, a paid holiday. Uh, something goes wrong, there's an emergency situation, somebody's got to come in. Um, those folks are salaried, that's just the nature of the beast. But if you're classified, then because you're already being paid for the day, you are essentially coming in for free. And so there's no way to get around the, the law in the sense that I can't pay you overtime or can't have you clock in. A holiday is a holiday or a weekend is a weekend. But what we could do is establish essentially a local emergency fund so that if we called you in on one of these days, then we would just give you a blanket uh, $250 stipend, which based on the salaries of the folks that have been called in, and it's only happened, for example, this year twice thus far, to my knowledge. I'm not talking about shelter pay. That's a whole separate issue for hurricanes. This is just day-to-day -day something in the maintenance goes wrong. It's the Martin Luther King holiday. We need somebody to come in and help us. And this person, since they're already on the clock, technically doesn't get anything extra. We would like to provide something going forward when that happens. Right. I don't anticipate it being a large sum, but obviously it's local funds and need your permission to, to spend those if you award it. And you would do the best you can, right? Yes, sir. As okay. long as it doesn't include yeah. you, because we're not giving you any money. <laughs> no, I don't think we we're going to be going in, right? We're going to be in worse shape if the maintenance department calls me to come in and help. So. I was thinking that. <laughs> okay, we've heard Mr. Dunn's request. What's the bill? Right, make a motion. All right, got a motion? Second. Got a second? All right, any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of this motion, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. All right, Dr. Phipps. The updated calendar. Just want to ask for your approval. These are minor changes. I really want to tip my hat to the calendar committee when we put these calendars together. We often don't have to talk about what we've built in in terms of time in the calendar, and we've really benefited uh, in this early winter time that we've had time that we could pull. You all know that we took a couple of teacher work days, one in February, one in March. We also were able to cobble together hours that were early release that we made full days. Mm -hmm. There are two changes I want to make. Uh, what I'm asking for for the days that we were out last week, the only thing I feel like we need to do in terms of our calendar is we have a Good Friday early release day on April the 30th. I'd like to make that a full day. And we'll take those hours. We won't need any other makeup time. And I'll still have about 14 hours in the schedule if something comes up. Is that up. March 30th or April 30th? March, March, March 30th. Yeah. I just went the wrong thing. No, you're okay. Thank you for saying that. I just that. wanted to make sure it's good for it, 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 it is in March. Because I have that holiday yes. as well, and it's on March 30th. It, 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 it was an early release day, which want to make it a full okay. day. And that'll let us grab those right. hours, and that'll get put back in. Related to that is the early college calendar. And the difference that we work on is the early college calendar is a 185 day calendar, and everybody else is operating on the 1,025 instructional hours. They have something called satellite days built into the cap and, and all the innovation innovative high schools do because all those students have computers and they have access at home and the teachers are working on canvas they're able to conduct business even on days when we're not physically in school so what Ms. Paik has asked in, in this is kind of a formality for you the 26th of January would now be a satellite day instead of the 23rd 
and they'll be able to keep their optional teacher work days on February the 19th and March the 9th just because they're but they're going to make the 30th a full day and they need to do that because they share our buses and they can't get out early if, if they're dependent on our buses so you need multiple approvals for that if we could approve both calendar changes that'd be fine add yeah. it to it. do it again yeah I'll just add both to the um, Thank you. motion second all right got a motion and a second to the superintendent's request any other discussion Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. I hope we won't have any more weather. Yeah. Me, yeah. me too. They said it first of February. Said that already. Come on. Yeah. Okay, okay, moving on down. Uh, discussion, no action. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Hudson, capital budget update. Um, my 1718 capital update dated 12318. Um, plan operations HVAC has been completed as of today and we also completed the central office um, new unit in Mr. Dunes and the um, room beside of his office has been installed um, last Friday. I did have one more addition which would be line um, six which is south side. I did receive the drawings today from RPA and I reached out to two contractors and they're going to meet me on site tomorrow to look at a masonry that's proposed to correct that issues. Um, what the engineer did, and I have a drawing, but uh, drop down two, row, two rows of brick on the existing wall, put in uh, fasteners to support that wall, and then put in fasteners to hold the new row lock down. And then install the wall, and we're going to actually move the wall in three quarters of an inch to put most of the bearing weight of that wall on the original floor of the school. So. Any questions about that? Anybody have any questions? All right, then I have one for update on Eastern um, Elementary's playground. Um, I did meet with a gentleman and we took um, six uh, soil samples out in the area up to grades of um, 18 inches and it was very prominent everywhere we went and we found nothing but glass. We didn't find another piece of anything. So their recommendation would be either to Cover it with fabric and cover it with bark, or cover it with fabric and cover it with grass. But I will be presenting that back to y'all for this coming year's capital and something we could do out the summer. There's no way we could do anything out there over the school year other than keep maintaining it and walking the site to pick up anything that we find. Okay. What are we? I haven't been out there um, since I think we were there for a presentation. What are we doing to keep the kids off? Is it? Is it roped off, or do teachers just know it's not to take kids it's in that the area? The whole campus, Miss Carolyn, is everywhere. Even out front of the school, out on the in. playground, in the middle of the playground too. Yes, in the middle of the playground. Everywhere that we went, we went out to the oak tree. I was standing at the oak tree when we were moving snow, and it's scattered all over the campus, in between pod five, 28 inches yeah, in the ground. I cut a finger with glass that was in there. So. I don't know what and, and I don't want us to wait until the summer. I, th I think when we're talking about safety issues and, yes. the, and the concerns we've got, we need to get a price and an idea of what it costs, and then we've got to go ahead and make a yeah. motion or move on something yeah. sooner rather than later when we're talking about a situation like this. Yeah. I hate to see us wait until a budget is approved in the in the summer. I know summer would be ideal, but a lot can happen between now and then, and I'm not willing. My to playground do guys walking it every week and picking up what we can find. We're trying to get the leaves and stuff up that has fallen in between the snow, so we can better canvas it. But there's a lot of debris out there that's covering it up at this point. But. Okay. Or can you just go and get a price and bring it back to you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I'm, I'm already yeah, working on getting great. some numbers together for budget purposes, so I'll have some valid sure. numbers. Another update piece, uh, Willie Mack and I met with the county manager last week. They are going to start releasing capital funds for us moving forward at the end of this month in equal installments. So I've asked Stan to go ahead and get the RFPs for the other projects that we have on hold, and we'll do those as we can. And, and uh, obviously it will take us beyond our budget uh, proposal to have all that finished, but we'll be working on it. Any other questions for Stan? Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. All right. Dr. Phipps. Revision policy. This is a policy for first reading, not asking any action. This was uh, on the request of a couple of authorities that look at policies. And if you take a, if you, if you have the attachment, if you scan down, uh, the only uh, strikeouts that we're uh, recommending are on page six. 
and it removes specific names of individuals. And the reason for that is if we have a name of an individual in a policy and that individual changes positions for any reason, we've got to come back to you <coughs> for a revision of the policy. So what we have are the, are the names of the, of the positions uh, which shouldn't change. And then any handouts, when we have our 504 book for the year, it would have the individual named in that and other uh, relative information from year to year. But for our policy, we just wanted to state the position and not an individual name. So that's the only change there. Yeah. We'll be bringing that back to you, but that's it. Okay. All right. All right, 6.3, NERS, but not fit. This was something I wanted to mention last night, just a conversation. I want to say that this may be the beginning of a much larger conversation. This year's budget, as we get into it, I think it's probably going to be a, a, a two or three year conversation budget just because of looming issues that we have with class size reduction. And we've got to take a close look at where we're at with our fund balance and the allocations and, and those kinds of things. But one of the questions that has come up are, are the number of students that we have at the Northeast Regional School uh, that's in, in, Roper, in uh, Jamesville now. And what, what I have, and I want to explain the table that I've provided. Actually, there are two of them. Everybody got a copy? At the top, if you take a look, it says nurse per grade. That's just 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th. And they're set up very much like our early college. So there's a 13th grade there that are super seniors. Then the number of students that are in NERSPA, and then the column that says number BCS, that's the number of Beaufort County students that make up that grade level. So the simple math tells you in the ninth grade, there's 60 ninth graders, 21 of those are from Beaufort County, which means we make up 35% of the, of the freshman class. We make up 37.5% of the 10th grade class, and you can see that these numbers are as of January the 18th. And it's just like any other school, when you look at it, depending on the date you're at, so I want you to know that's the numbers that we pulled. Down below that, what, what I wanted to show you is that if you take a total look at the population, Beaufort County makes up roughly 30% of the NERSPA population. When we went into this with Walter Dalton when this was first done, I, my understanding was that there was a relative proportionality that each school district would have based on size. That's right. and, and when I try to get a picture of what our proportionality would be, the numbers are in the second table. And I want you to look at it in two ways because I didn't know what comments we might get. The, and I didn't put these in alphabetical order, and I apologize. The five counties that are involved in NERSBA, you see are Beaufort, Martin, Terrell, and Pitt, and Washington. The number of students that are listed there are as of yesterday, and this is on the best one of two allotment for 2017-18 school year, not adjusted for anything. This comes directly from DPI. So these numbers may change, but at least they're consistent on the day that I pulled them. The, the, for Beaufort County, you see we're at 6832. You can go down the list. The total number of students that we have, and I don't know if super seniors in early colleges are included because it, uh, it didn't go beyond 12th grade, so I'm not sure about that. But if we just use the numbers that we've got right here, there are 35,804 students, kindergarten through 12th grade, in the five counties. You can see where, where we rank in terms of our percentage of that population. So Beaufort County makes up 19.08% of the overall population, and, and that's important to me. So then I wanted to pull the number of 9th through 12th graders that are in those five counties, and it doesn't change very much. We go to 20.3%. So if we're talking about proportionality, in my opinion, and I don't want to speak for the board, but when we conceived of this idea, my thought was that Beaufort County would never have more represented population at the school anymore. This would be kind of a, a cap of where we are at 20%. You can see we're at 30.36. The total population right now is 22.4. 20% of that is 44.8. The question, the dilemma that we're dealing with, and, and you're going to hear a lot more of it in the next uh, 45 days as we talk about budget, is the amount of money that we send out of county. We send money out of county for charter schools, uh, and those are things that we don't have any control over. This is a hybrid different situation that we've gone into. If you take a look at the super senior class, there are four students there. If we continue on at the rate we're going, we would have four students would come off this list and if it stayed the way that it is, 20 more, one more students would be added. If that stayed in place, in five years, you're going to have over 100 kids of, of, of hours that are going to be at NERSP, and there's no guarantee that would happen. There, the, the concern I've got is our local money right now projected in the, in the financial statements at NERSPA, 112,000 local dollars are going to NERSPA, and $395,000 last year went out of the state money. That's over a half a million dollars. Have you had a conversation with uh, Pitt's superintendent about this? We, we've talked 
uh, everybody that's involved have had some conversations. We're all in a little bit different places of what's offered. You know, we have an early college that we that we that we have in place, and, and Pitt has. I think they've got one maybe open and a second one now. And, and some don't have an early college. Some are using. Uh, some have other models and things that they're following. The way I look at, it, I think there are three options. We can continue doing what we're doing. Um, we can put a cap on the number of students that we've got there, or you could decide you no longer want to be a part of the school. And, and I think all of those involve some conversation and discussion. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to have the opportunity uh, in a retreat that I'm going to be asking you about in, in a little bit to bring back any additional information that you might that you might want in terms of numbers or dollars or, or anything like that. What I'm telling you right now is as we speak, we're looking at over a half a million dollars of money that, that, that is going to nurse, but, but that's because of the number of students that we have there. Which represents that, 10 teachers. It, it would represent 10, they could be 10 <coughs> teachers, that, that's correct. Um, I, I raise concerns, uh, and Mr. Hodge, uh, he and I both serve on the board at NERSBA, and he raised some concerns. They, they passed out the number. These numbers are actually a little bit lower for Beaufort County than the numbers we saw a few months ago. Um, at one point, there were 52 students in the freshman class, and 26 were from Beaufort. So we made up a, a clear 50 percent. That number is not not there anymore. Um, I just want you to see this in in relation to all the other conversations that we're going to have uh, in terms of of what we're dealing with. You're going to find out that we're chasing about a half a million dollars in terms of where we're at to try to break even and. This is one piece that I think needs to be considered. I don't know what the solution is. I, we haven't had a chance to talk about it as a group, but I, but I think we need to have some conversation. And Mac is, you know, I, I don't know what you may want to say, but Mac serving in two roles certainly is looking at <coughs> two different perspectives. I've got to look out for Beaufort County Schools first. That's who I serve. That's that's where my Stop. allegiance Amen. is, and and I'm going to do that. If there's a way to make both work. We can, but if not, I'm, I'm, my allegiance is to Beaufort County. And I agree. Well, when it, when it was brought to my attention, at the same time with Dr. Phipps, I, I said, at this time, our Board of Education is still in full support of the school, and I think the school does good things. But, going back, we got to look out for us, us first. That's right. And so, this being a non-action item, I would like to ask that we get with the leaders over at NERSPA, and maybe we have a, a, a sit-down talk with them and tell him where we're coming because we haven't never sat down and met with them face to face and we, we got to get an understanding and I believe um, that Dr. Phipps is correct it was supposed to be on some type of scale of students to be that would be for us right. to, uh, to be uh, letting attend over there yeah. and so forth but um, I, won't, I don't want to deprive anybody but we still got to look out for our bottom line first our home folks first so can I clear up some of these numbers? I, I mean, just so I understand it. Sure. Yes, sir. I, I, you mentioned, uh, Don, uh, 6,832 for both. That was the number they gave you currently. But when you, you is that what you were saying? What's that number? Yeah. 6,832. Yeah. 6, yes, yes. Is what DPI said. That, that's what? the, that's a, the allotment non-adjusted. It's straight off the DPI Right. Does that website. include pre-K or no. something? No. Well, no. When you gave no, us a presentation in November, I, I got it here. The allotments from the state have been, they've been running a little high. Okay. And they'll adjust it, and that's why we had a reversal. So really, we don't really. I don't think that we have six eight hundred. No, and we don't know. This is the only way I could do something that right. was the same know, for everybody. I, but I mean, I'm just trying year. to clear up the two because you yeah. presented to us that our number at ten days was sixty five hundred. Right. Ninety four. Right. I mean, that's a huge difference right there. Uh, I, I hear what our chairman is saying, and actually agree with him. There's some discussions got to be made, but the urgency. There are some things that we need to decide. Well, I know we can't decide now because it's not an action item, but we need to get together and decide real soon. If you look yesterday's in the paper, that was a half a page article. They're in the process of accepting applications right in front of us. Last year, we allowed them to come into our schools and actually made presentations. They physically went into our eighth graders. So we can't wait or they're going to be in our schools recruiting students. And personally for me, I think we need to stop that completely right now. I mean, I, when I say right now, I don't mean I'm going to make a motion and stuff. No, right. Chair. I understand. But I mean, but we need to stop that right now. Um, there's no way, even if you cap it, because I know you and I have had some discussions on capping the number of people, but since you have a limited number that are exiting the school, that's not going to help you basically any at all. I mean, if you put nobody into their freshman class coming up, you're not going to help yourself a whole lot at all. Um, I mean, there's some things I'd just love to say, but I don't think I'm going to say them right now. 
But I think here's a decision that's going to have to be made. I will say this, and it's going to probably shock some people when I say this, but I've worked on the budget here for a number of years, and I understand it. And I understand where we're headed with our allotment. Give yourself about two more years of this kind of thing supporting this school in Jaysville. And I have nothing against the school, because I want to question why we can't do that in our own early college, even if we have to add something to it and bring all these students back. But you're only about two years away. I see. That's right. I don't know if you want me to say it or not. No, you're absolutely You're right. about two years away. You're going to decide either you're going to pull a schools like EdTech and close it up and do something with it. You're going to pull completely out of this school in Jamesville. Or you're going to look at our smaller schools because and our smaller school being S.W. Snow, <coughs> you're no, not going to have no. the money budget-wise to run these schools. Mm. And that is a harsh thing to say. But if you understand our money situation and how our money comes to us, I wouldn't be surprised if you don't make a decision on two of those three. One of those three you're going to make a decision on because if not, you're not going to have the funds to put the teachers in the schools that we have. And I was elected to look after Beaufort County, not Martin County. Well, I think what you're saying with the urgency of it, we need to make a we need to meet you sooner got or to later meet about soon it. Because they're recruiting in our schools very soon. Right. I mean it was in the paper yesterday. I didn't make it up. I read it in the paper. Yeah, right. Well and so we've got to stop it now. Kind of a budget tidbit that goes along with that. And that's part of what I want to talk about as we get into that in, in subsequent meetings. We received a reduction this year because our average daily membership, our student enrollment was down. So that means that we lost more. Do you remember how many positions? We lost uh, four positions. Mm. Four positions, and, and, and that's because those positions and the money tied to them are tied to the number of students that we have. We have to make cuts at, that, at least that number of positions, or we're going to continue to put that burden on local, and we cannot afford to do it. And in our county, we've not made cuts uh, like that to reflect our ADM, and you have to make difficult adjustments if you don't keep up with it along the way. So part of what we're going to talk about is going to be that piece of where are we at with fund balance, where are we at with our operations. You can't continue to live off fund balance. Eventually, you're going to run out. And then you're going to have tough decisions, and you got to make them all at once. So I want us to be smart. I want us to. I want you to know what all the barriers are. But this is one barrier that we've got some control over that I think we need to look at. I, I think all I'm saying, and I'll, I'll stop, is is everybody hearing what I'm saying? How can we sit here as a board of education in Beaufort County, make cuts that affect our schools in Beaufort County, and send our students and our money to Martin County? How can we sit here and do that? I'm not in support of doing that at all. I personally think we need to pull completely out of that school, bring these kids back to Beaufort County, figure out how we can educate them here because we're, we're losing students. And I've looked at it from every different angle. We're doing it to ourselves. <laughs> I mean, there's always kids going to leave that we can't control. But we certainly don't need to put an approval on sending students and money to another county that a school that is basically supported by Martin Community College, when we have a community college here that's struggling to stay, stay up now, I, but we can talk about it later. But that, I mean, that's the city. You need to be thinking about this. This is serious, and it is right in front. That's scary. I think right Dr. Phillips is looking at a date that maybe we can get the other leaders to come in and Good we can job. sit down and talk to them. And know. I will say one more thing. Come I want to build on what he said, if I don't mind. And that's for our chairman. I did go back. I read the minutes from Nurseville to make sure I had the numbers and everything right. And it was clearly brought out right in the minutes that our current chairman, Mr. Hodges, called him on it. And I appreciate hey, that, Chad. I do. He stood up for us in that meeting and called him on us and said, hey, you all being fair to us. <laughs> all right. No, so thank you. You are um, welcome. And I have a question that isn't about NERSBA, uh, but it's tied to the discussion we'll have. Do we know yet, Mark, we're gonna, where we're going to be with all this the uh, maneuvering in the K. No, because the whole, the whole piece of enhancement. Because that could have a huge impact, impact on us, right? Impact, and that's one reason. We'll probably move toward capital first to give us a chance to get some information okay. from the state and get an idea. But we don't know what state level support there are for enhancement teachers or whether those are going to fall on us. And if the state doesn't pick that up, it's going to be a local well, that's, that's why I said it could be directly uh, tied to, to NERSBA because if it has that kind of financial impact on us, it may not be, even be a choice. Yeah. 
uh, it, it may be something we're forced to, to take care of our own first. Now, with, with that in mind, I don't remember the date. It's in early February. The lobbyists for the for the county commissioners for local are going to be meeting with, with me and Mark along with the county manager. I think the county commissioners are concerned that this may be passed down to them, so we're going to hopefully have them on our side across the state just okay. to ask for some relief from the general I, assembly. I didn't know because I knew that that would ha could have the potential to have a huge <laughs> financial And that's one reason we don't want to roll out a lot of budget stuff in early January. There's so many things that are going to change that are going to change the picture of what we're dealing with so uh, you know we, we get started in that and, and that's really what we're going to kick off when we have this next retreat okay. all right good discussion thank you uh, moving down on the agenda to close item session. seven closed session to have a motion I move that we go into closed session pursuant to the general statute 143-3181 yeah, I mean 11 to prevent disclosure of confidential and personal file personnel files under General Statute 115 C-321 and formulate their plans relating to emergency response to school violence. Okay. Second. All right, got a motion and a second. All in favor of this motion say aye. 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 Open up. All opposed? We include session. Randy, we good? All right, we're back in open session. And first item is to approve the personnel agenda that was presented. I move. All right, got a motion, got a second. Any further discussion? See none? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, aye. motion passes. I did a second. Okay, you did a second. All right, <laughs> updates. Uh, moving down, calendar. Yeah, you see the calendar in front of you. You have the Minority Hiring Practices Committee on the 30th, our board meetings for February work session on the 6th, and our monthly meeting on the 20th. We're running into budget season, and, and you may recall there are times we have four meetings a month. I want to have another retreat that won't involve any presentations. It will be strictly really budget-related things or other items that we've got going on. And I'd like to look at either the 1st, the 8th, or the 13th. Okay. The, the sooner as quick the better. As we can yeah. so we can talk about these yeah. other issues we're yeah. discussing. February 1st would probably be better. The if, it's a Thursday. Is that okay with you? Yeah, I, I just Thursdays are hard for me during the day. And I, well, if you wanted to do it the 30th after the minority hiring practice committee, that's next week. That's, that's next fine. Tuesday. Well, the first is next week too. That's, yeah, that's right. right. <laughs> I'm just trying to get it early, but the first would be would be first. on Thursday. I mean, we're not going to do it during the day, are we? No, I was thinking 5:30 if we could. Oh, I'm good then. Either right. date. Okay. First is good week. First, yeah. first. Can we do the first? Okay. So, so that'll be adding February the first at 5:30. Okay. That's, and that's going just going to be a retreat. Is this a retreat? Are you going back to? Yeah, let's go back to Ed Tech okay. and do it there. All right. How come? It's just easier to set. We, we can meet here if you want to. I just wondered. Yeah. It's I, just mean, e I feel like it's more open ab fine. ability. As long as we don't need our laptops. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. What time? So that'd be 5:30. Then at that yeah. time, can we look at some other dates up here? Too? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, any board member updates at this time? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to let the board know that uh, Stan spoke with me earlier this afternoon, and he told me that uh, the park, uh, let you know that the park, uh, there was some mis putting down pipes or something with the bathroom, and that's why it's been sitting there. They've been waiting for, it was uh, on the city's, or is that not right, Dr. Phillips? It was the city's. They had uh, to move right? it because yeah. of, of something having to do with the pump station. Yeah, right, right. And they had to go back and redo that. And he just told me today that they have, they've taken care of that already. And what they're going to do now is to get ready to put the bids out for the, the walking trail, what have you, on the park. Okay. So I just want to keep you up. Informed as to what's going on there. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Superintendent update. I uh, have covered a lot. We, we talked about the meeting with the county manager. Uh, we have several schools, and Terry Draper had brought this up at one time about having more conversation of parents being able to get feedback on wit and wisdom. And we were going to call something a wit and wisdom night, which is not fair because there's some, some teachers and others that are not doing that program. So they're doing a special language arts curriculum night. And they're scheduled from now. Like we, we've got a calendar that we're going to have posted on the website through mid-February that would give parents, anybody in the community, the chance to go in and talk with teachers about the things that they're doing and, and ask questions. It'd be kind of a language art showcase, depending on what those teachers are doing. I just wanted you to be aware of that going on. 
Um, we've got our retreat scheduled and then the calendar update again I wanted to thank the folks who helped work up the calendar that doesn't seem like a big deal but when you're dealing with changes the more you have built into that calendar the easier it is on everybody big deal anything else yes. all right uh, I, I, excuse me I wanted to say and, and I talked to Don about this today um, last night Eastern Elementary could not attend our retreat because they were having math night you want to tell in yeah. the title one I mean, uh, 473 people wow. that were there which is just incredible wow. even if you include whoever you include 473 folks to show up is just tremendous support for that school and I'm so proud of them and, and the community support they had a great time I think they ate over 70 pizzas oh. I don't know where they had it I'm not sure what the details were uh, yeah I think it was all in the multi-purpose okay um, Ms. P? I make a motion we adjourn. I second. Thank you. All right. All in favor, just motion say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passed. He probably opposed.